And you'd have to be very wealthy to purchase the largest and most expensive home ever listed in this country. The house is in Los Angeles's Bel Air neighborhood. Luxury real estate markets the world over were already suffering from a slump even before the COVID-19 pandemic took its toll on the global economy. Bel Air homes offer unparalleled privacy and comfort for the discerning buyer. We are going inside Bel Air's most expensive mega mansion. By the way, make sure to click that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our engaging videos and use that trigger finger by smashing the like button. Now, let's get into it. Seven years after he started working on The One, a 100,000 square foot mansion in Bel Air, movie producer turned developer Niall Niyami says he's just about ready to test the market with his ballyhooed $500 million asking price. Replete with a nightclub, four swimming pools, bowling alley, and 360 degree vistas of sun dappled Southern California, the symbol of America's latest Gilded Age has generated a flood of media coverage since the price was announced in 2015. And while permitting problems, construction delays, and financing issues have exposed the struggles of building luxury homes on speculation and raised questions about whether the project high above Los Angeles would ever be finished, Niami says he's almost done. And he's not backing off the lofty price tag, which would make the house the most expensive house in America. Niami admits that the pressure of his development odyssey has aged him prematurely. Building mega mansions without a buyer lined up can be precarious. Cost overruns and delays are common, carrying costs are high, and shifting appetites for luxury are hard to predict. And while a project is eye-popping as the one grab headlines, the amenities and specific designs can ultimately narrow the pool of potential buyers, said appraiser Jonathan Miller, president of the real estate appraisal and consulting firm Miller Samuel Inc. Niami says that's not a problem. Los Angeles has tried to limit the construction of new mega mansions, meaning nothing like the one can be built again, the developer said. And while one amenity that got a lot of attention, a room with tanks of live jellyfish lining the walls, has been dropped because it was too much work, Niami said he's got something planned that's even better. Developer Niall Niami once had grandeurs of listing his magnum opus, a 105,000 square foot mega mansion known as The One, for upwards of $500 million. Despite hitting the market for $160 million less than originally planned, the palatial estate could still become the most expensive home ever sold in the United States. It hit America's market for $340 million. Famously known as The One, the mini shopping mall-sized estate straddles one of the highest promontories in Bel Air, spanning about 100,000 square feet of total living space. By comparison, the White House weighs in at just under 55,000 square feet. The 115-room Hearst Castle makes do with a modest 68,500. The One holds another record for its sheer size. The quarter-mile-long Bel Air Mansion is the largest in the world, comprising 21 bedrooms, 42 bathrooms, a 30-vehicle showroom, and five swimming pools. Extravagant extras include a four-lane bowling alley, 30-seat movie theater, hair and beauty salon, a 6,000-square-foot principal suite with a dual dressing room, and 10,000-square-foot sky deck complete with a putting green. It's difficult to grasp the sheer size of the one just by looking at pictures or numbers, although it is clearly massive. To appreciate the project's full scale, go for a walk. The mansion stretches for a full quarter mile along Stradello Road in Bel Air, looming over the street like a big white alien spacecraft. As for the property's main driveway, set on quiet cul-de-sac known as Aerial Way, it's long and wide enough to put most public roads to shame. The palatially palatial extravaganza is the personal chef de vore of Niall Niami, arguably LA's most famous, and famously bombastic, developer of ultra-high-end mansions, the snazzy contemporary kind seen in magazines and bought by billionaires. The San Fernando Valley native first came into prominence about a decade ago designing Hollywood Hills homes in the $20 million range. He's since graduated to bigger and brasher projects, selling them to the likes of Diddy, Floyd Mayweather, Calvin Klein, and the Winklevoss twins. The one is characterized by clean lines, water features, neutral colors, and unobstructed views. McLean has collaborated with Niami on numerous projects over the last 12 years, from renovations in the Hollywood Hills to new builds in the Bird Streets. Some of those expectations have been tempered. The jellyfish room proved too costly and impractical. It was ultimately scrapped. Ditto for the fresh flowers, the ice bar, and the planned catering kitchen. The nightclub and the room with candy walls remain, however, as does a 50-car garage, sans the planned car turntables, a four-lane bowling alley, and an Olympic-sized indoor swimming pool with lounge decks. There are outdoor swimming pools, too, no fewer than five of them, all infinity-edged. 
The mansion interiors, like all of Niami's prior projects, were designed by Catherine Rotondi of KFR Design. Interior design by Catherine Rotondi of KFR Design created the lavish yet surprisingly livable interiors, playing up the enormous scale of the home with oversized art pieces and custom furnishings by Vesta. Niami, a former film producer turned developer, purchased the eight-acre property for $28 million in late 2012, and construction took eight years and 600 laborers to complete. Brandon and Rainey Williams of Williams & Williams Estates Group and Aaron Kerman of Compass will share the listing for the one. If it fetches $340 million, the sale will oust Jeff Bezos' recent purchase of the $165 million Warner Estate in Beverly Hills, currently the priciest single-family transaction in California history. It'll also shatter the record for the country's highest-priced home ever sold, which is held by hedge fund billionaire Ken Griffin, who snapped up a $238 million NYC penthouse in 2019. In keeping with the interior revisions, the asking price has received a big haircut. Although the exact number hasn't been officially released, and the agents involved remain cagey, rumors say modified ask is only now about $340 million, a nod to budget reductions and reality. The more sober number is a boon for Niami, who's faced recent financial woes, including foreclosure proceedings on other projects per previous reports. Still, the rumored price tag is still double the most expensive home transaction in California history, the $165 million paid by Bezos for David Geffen's eight-acre Beverly Hills estate. It's also $100 million more than the country's most expensive home deal of all time, the $230 million Ken Griffin paid for his New York penthouse in 2019. For that, buyers will receive a glass-walled contemporary showcase with a cinema-quality home theater, a beauty salon, and Olympic-sized indoor swimming pool with lounge decks. At 6,000 square feet, the master suite is bigger than many suburban McMansions. It includes its own private swimming pool and at least two bedroom-sized dressing rooms, both of them lavish enough to put any Rodeo Drive boutique to shame. There's also a 50-car garage, four-lane bowling alley, and a sky deck with a putting green. Opinions remain divided about the architectural merits of the one. Some say the futuristic style will stand the test of time. Others claim it looks more like a swollen asylum or a hospital, or rigidly geometric residential white elephant for that matter. In 2015, Niami claimed the house was being built with a very specific buyer in mind, although who that buyer actually is remains unclear. Also murky is who'd want to purchase a mega-conspicuous residential complex of this scale and magnitude, even at the lower $340 million mark. It's still far out of reach for many billionaires. Previous reports have indicated that Niami plans to focus on new money tech tycoons a la Jean Coombe, who sold WhatsApp to Facebook and has since spent more than $300 million on luxury California real estate, and Honey founder George Ruan, who sold out to PayPal for $4 billion and subsequently assembled an $80 million Bel Air compound. There are also the more unusual suspects, too. Saudi and Emirati sheiks, and big crazy rich money from Hong Kong, Taiwan, and mainland China. Should any of them happen to be searching for the biggest and baddest compound in all of Tinseltown, well, there's really only one. The one is being co-marketed by Brandon and Rainey Williams of the Beverly Hills Estates and Aaron Kerman of Compass. What can you say about Bel Air's most expensive mega mansion? Let us know in the comments section below. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel so we can continue giving you the best content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.